Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of our risen Lord and Savior be with all of you. And with your spirit. Good morning and welcome as we are privileged to celebrate this third Sunday of Easter through the goodness and the marvel of television. And so as we prepare to celebrate our Mass this day, let us be mindful of our sins and open our hearts to God's divine mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the resurrection and the life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, by dying, you destroyed our death. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, by rising, you restored our life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us from our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on, on earth peace to, to people, people of goodwill. Good we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that, rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the captain and the court officers had brought the apostles in and made them stand before the Sanhedrin, the high priest questioned them. We gave you strict orders, did we not, to stop teaching in that name? Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you want to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles said in reply, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus, though you had killed him by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to grant Israel repentance and forgiveness of sins. We are witnesses of these things, as is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. The Sanhedrin ordered the apostles to stop speaking in the name of Jesus and dismissed them. So they left the presence of the Sanhedrin, rejoicing that they had been found worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of the name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. I will, I will praise, praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. I will extol you, O Lord, for you drew me clear and did not let my enemies rejoice over me. O Lord, you brought me up from the netherworld. You Preserve me from among those going down into the pit. I will, I will praise you, Lord, for you, for you have rescued, rescued me. Sing praise to the Lord, you his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger lasts but a moment, a lifetime his goodwill. At nightfall, weeping enters in, but with the dawn, rejoicing. I will, I will praise, praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Hear, O Lord, and have pity on me. O Lord, be my helper. You changed my mourning into dancing. O Lord, my God, forever will I give thanks. I will, I will praise, praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, looked and heard the voices of many angels who surrounded the throne and the living creatures and the elders. They were countless in number, and they cried out in a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches, wisdom and strength, honor and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea, everything in the universe cry out, to the one who sits on the throne and to the lamb be blessing and honor, glory and might forever and ever. The four living creatures answered, amen, and the elders fell down and worshiped. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Christ is risen, creator of all. He has shown pity on all people. 
Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus revealed himself to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. He revealed himself in this way. Together were Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, Zebedee's sons, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We'll also come with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. When it was already dawn, Jesus was standing on the shore, but the disciples did not recognize that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, have you caught anything to eat? They answered him, No. So he said to them, Cast the net over the right side of the boat, and you will find something. So they cast it, and were not able to pull it in because of the number of fish. So the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord. He tucked in his garment, for he was lightly clad, and jumped into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, for they were not far from shore, only about a hundred yards, dragging the net with the fish. When they climbed out on shore, they saw a charcoal fire with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you just caught. So Simon Peter went over and dragged the net ashore, full of 153 large fish. Even though they were so, there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to him, Them, come and have breakfast. And none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they realized it was the Lord. Jesus came over and took the bread and gave it to them, and in like manner the fish. This was now the third time Jesus was re revealed to his disciples after being raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Continue this wonderful Easter season, entering into its third week. We continue to hear the voice of Easter. Christ is risen. The voice of Easter that reminds us that God has the last word, always. The God of love, the God of life, the God of goodness, the God of mercy, always has the last word. And the voice of Easter that we heard Jesus greeting last week three times to his disciples in that upper room, peace be with you. And wanting those disciples to know and experience a deep-seated peace within them like they never had before. A peace that was caught up in healing and reconciling kind of love. And so, this morning, as we listen to this third account, this third experience of the disciples, that they had gone back to the north on the Sea of Galilee, the Sea of Tiberias, and they stepped into back into their routine as they were fishermen. They stepped back into their daily work. And as they did so, they had this another marvelous encounter with the Lord. And it is in that goodness that I think we all can think about the routines of our daily lives. I know I, from the moment I open my eyes early in the morning, that I'd sometimes even smile myself. I sometimes get radical and even change some of the things I'm used to doing, of getting up and making coffee and looking at the newspaper and prayer time and then all the things of preparation for the day. Sometimes just be radical and change up that routine. But we all have them, don't we? And th routines of throughout the day of what we do at, at our work, at our school, and our relationships, whatever it might be, coming home again. So routines are a very ordinary part of all of us. And so Jesus' appearance was coming to them, this resurrected Lord, in the midst of the routines of these fishermen that probably were oftentimes days that weren't too exciting like this appearance that we hear that they had been fishing out all night and they had caught absolutely nothing. So a long time routine of, of just waiting and waiting and waiting, casting nets and not having any kind of experience with that. 
But Jesus' appearance to them reminds of a couple of things as Jesus stepped into the ordinary routine of their lives is that invitation to always be open because of Jesus Christ risen from the dead to the extraordinary, the extraordinary that is about who our God is, the abundance about who our God is and invites us to trust and to believe, to be more and more attentive to just our daily lives. And sometimes in the past, I remember psychologists said a lot of us spend about 90, 90% of our time kind of dozing or almost asleep. But how do we become more alert and aware just every single day of the gift of life, the gift of whatever is happening with and among us, the gift of experiences that we have, and very particularly of the gift of what it means that we are resurrection people as the baptized, as a Christian people, that we live in the midst of the extraordinary risen presence of our Lord each and every day and how we can fine tune and become more attentive to that tremendous gift in our lives and how we allow that vision, as was true for those earliest apostles and disciples, to transform us as we grow deeper and deeper in our, in our faith and so deeper and deeper in experiencing just real inner peace and joy. And that's not the, the laughing kind of lighthearted always, but it's that deep-seated confidence of knowing that the Lord is right within us and among us, no matter what we face. It gives us great peace. And so, we are a resurrected people. And we might ask ourselves of how we allow that to really affect our lives and how we approach each day, how we approach our relationships, how we approach our work, our schooling, our relationships, whatever it might be. And ask ourselves, hmm, today, where do I see the risen Lord? Where do I see radical forgiveness? Where do I really see compassion and a helpfulness of others for others? Where do I see loving kindness? Where do I see social justice? And the list can go on and on. So it's how the Lord and our faith in his extraordinary presence continues to transform how we look at ourselves, how we look at our lives and the experiences that we have with the eyes of a deeper faith and confidence of the Lord's presence. And how does that truth continue to, again, change us and, and help us to change this world because we live more effectively each day in his presence. And so in this gospel story, is a wonderful experience about how Jesus shared a meal, shared that breakfast, and, and exactly, again, another pronouncement of one of the Lord's deepest desires is to feed us and to nourish us. And this experience of uh, having breakfast of fish and some bread is certainly hearkens to the miracles of the feeding of thousands with a few loaves of bread and a few fish and all point to the great gift of, of the perfect nourishment of the Lord in Holy Eucharist that we experience and have opened to us time and time again. And yes, through television, not necessarily actually receive the body of, and blood of Christ and Holy Communion, but we always put on that spiritual communion that we can open our hearts to receive the Lord in that wonderful, powerful way that because he wants to nourish us, he wants to feed us, he wants to give us the gift of Eucharist over and again, which is the gift of himself. And so the voice of Easter continues to be profound for us. The voice of his presence, the voice of his peace, the voice of his nourishing love. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth of all things, visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. 
For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Through the mystery of God's presence among us, let us confidently make our needs known to our Heavenly Father. That all who share and minister the faith to others, including Pope Francis, will always make known to their faithful that Jesus loves them, we pray to the Lord. Lord Our prayer. <clears throat> for all who govern, that they do so with integrity and true compassion for the neediest they serve, we pray to the <clears throat> Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That, like Peter, we accept the invitation of Jesus to be missionary disciples of his teachings, love, and compassion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> for Bishop Donald Hying, the next bishop of our diocese, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That, in this month of Mary, we may embrace her as a model of accepting the will of God and the love of her Son, Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> For those who are lonely, poor, or dealing with life struggles, either physically or material, that the Lord will bring comfort and strength to them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> that those who have died, especially Leon Stats, our Mass intention this morning, now be held in the light of God's love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> For our personal intentions, we now pause in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Kind and merciful God, you feed your people with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Hear the prayers we bring in the name of the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church. And as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of hosts, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 
Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim, we proclaim your, your death, death, O Lord, and, and profess your resurrection, resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, the Order of Bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For, For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's minister his word of peace to those near. Peace of Christ be with you, Jack. Thank you. Peace of Christ be with you, Aaron. Peace of Christ be with you, Luke. Thank you. Lamb of God, you, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold he who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am I'm not worthy that, that you should, should enter under, under my, my roof. roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. 
Let us pray. Look of kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Amen. Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass has ended. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. On behalf of the Apostolate and Monsignor Larry Bakke, our presider this morning, and the director of the Apostolate for Persons with Disabilities, and the pastor of St. Clair of Assisi Parish in Monroe, a sincere appreciation to you for sharing in the sacred liturgy of the third Sunday of Easter. Our acolytes were my brother, Luke Krebs, and Aaron Benshaw. I am Jack Krebs. We are members of Monsignor Larry's Parish in Monroe and honored to be a part of the television mass ministry of the Apostolate. Val Thompson of St. Pius X Parish in Cambridge provided our ministry of music as he has done for many years. Thanks to Sue Goodenkoff of St. Dennis Parish in Madison for her interpretation, which with closed captioning by the Apostolate, enables those of our television faith community who are deaf and hard of hearing to worship with us. We are forever grateful to the owner, management, and staff of WISC-TV, who by their generosity and social concern for persons of all faiths with disabilities, make the presentation of this celebration of faith, word, and Holy Eucharist possible. Make it a beautiful week, and may you be, and may you be grateful to the Lord, your God, for what he has done and the strength he provides in times of difficulty.